Hello Sagittarius and welcome to your mid-October reading. We are looking in the energy of the sun, moon, and rising signs of the Sagittarius Collective. Remember this is a general reading and will not resonate with everyone. These energies can be reversed so assign the roles as you please. If it doesn't resonate with you just stick around there may be something in it you need to hear. These messages are timeless. You're brought to this reading this channel. There's something in it for you. During this reading the angels are bringing the holy fire Reiki energy to you. If you're wanting to know about the 1010 reading which is the portal that we just went through there's a link at the top of the screen for the video for that and I always have suggestions videos at the end. I am doing personal readings, so check out the link in the description box down below for my website. If you like this reading or entertain in some way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. This way you get notified as soon as I post something new. What we're doing today for the 15th on until the end of the month is we're still in Mercury retrograde. That will go stationed on the 18th and then the closer we get to November, the energy will lighten up and lighten up. What I'm going to do today, uh, I'm going to specifically look at the Justice card. And this is actually the card of Libra because Mercury retrograde is in Libra. So I want to see the energy that's happening around this retrograde until the end. Some of you guys already know what's happening because you're in the middle of it. And you've seen things resurface and you have re-examined things. This time period that you may be re-experiencing will be between the years of 1994 and 1999 and also in 2005 and 2008. Those are going to be the things that may be resurfacing for you. So if you see something in your life right now, go back in time and start to see was there other things that were happening similarly um, in those time periods that are happening right now and what did you do uh, in those instances and what can you do differently? Because time is not linear, it's multidimensional. So we're living in multi, multi time periods at the same time. We have different timelines happening at the same time. So while you're healing your adult self, you're actually healing the aspects of your child as well. So that's why we go back into our childhood and re-examine the things. And every single, I get people all the time who say, what is my sole purpose? Everybody's sole purpose here is to learn love. Everybody's sole purpose here is to learn self-worth. Now, God gave you gifts that you can utilize in order to help you learn uh, more about yourself and how to love yourself. But those gifts aren't necessarily your sole purpose. They're gifts. They're things that you, in your soul contract, decided that you wanted to bring those into this life experience for you. So sometimes people get caught up, and I did that too for the longest time. I was like, oh, I sing well, so I must have, my sole purpose must have something to do with singing. Um, and so, no, I think that that just was a way of connecting back into the divine. There's a reason why I like to sing is because I always thought that it was because when I got on stage, it felt like I was a different person, and I was able to express myself and share feelings with people without being, without it actually being me. Like I could be within the character that I was portraying in like musical theater or something like that. I could be the character and really live in that experience and, and help. And I was thinking I was able to heal myself in that way. But what, but if I did that, I wouldn't be here helping you with your life experience. So my sole purpose was to heal myself so that I would be able to access these gifts to where I could help you on your journey. So it's very interesting how we, we sometimes get stuck in the fact that we think that our gifts are where we're supposed to be living. I think the gifts are where we're supposed to be healing <laughs> and learning who we are and loving ourselves and then that will open up the doors maybe for something different. This card is the card of Libra. We're gonna take a look at that. It is about balance and perception and objectivity. You could have been looking at through this whole retrograde, so I want you to be introspective for a moment and think about during this retrograde, what was it that you were looking at? Where, where, was it for the home? Did you have legal issues coming up for you about your property that needed to be resolved? Were there contracts that needed to be signed? Um, were there ways that you were making progress in your home? Let's look at relationships. Because there's a lot of people in the world. We're all going to experience it differently. So let's talk about relationships. What does Libra do for relationships? Libra balances out the practical issues that are important. Focusing in on the emotional aspects, like are your emotional needs being met in your relationships? It's about finding the right balance between work and relationship as well. 
So some of you guys are not balanced in um, either one of those. Some of you guys are focusing too much on relationships and, and disregarding your work. Some of you guys are focusing too much on work and putting your relationship on the back burner. You may be getting tested at work. You may be um, having different job interviews or negotiations and um, those things can be really successful during the Libra time period. So if you're switching a job, hopefully it was one that you were already looking at or you were already looking at this move before the retrograde came in. But uh, if you haven't had those yet, then you might get them till the end of the month because we are in the Libra time period. During this time, you may have been more frugal with your money during this financial period. But um, money matters will improve as we get closer to the November period. So you would, may have seen in Congress how they're going back and forth about the debt ceiling. You know, are we going to be getting a stimulus? Yes, no. What things are we going to be doing? It's just like this, this back and forth ping pong ball that they're throwing. And what we're going to see is that it's going to start to balance out as we get out of the retrograde and go closer to November. So during this time, you may have felt like balance at work and your relationship and your money issues have spiraled out of control. And now it's time to recognize the dishonesty, you know, the, the things that are being treated unfairly. Maybe you've gotten bad advice from people or trusted people that you shouldn't have trusted. It's time to speak your truth and find your voice and stay strong in your values. So the justice, she is all about right values and rewarding fairness. She's very logical in the way that she influences things during this time period. It is a card of empowerment and advising you to take the left brain approach to take control. Listen to the advice from people around you with that you do respect because she could be putting different people, this, this energy could be putting different people in your life to help you get through the, the injustices of the unfairness that is, that are not, that were not happening so that you could take a look at the things to help you be more stable in your life. Okay, Sagittarius, let's see what's going on in your sign with the energy that is happening with the Mercury retrograde all the way till the end of the month. You ready? So four cards. And then we'll take a look at the full moon that's happening tonight. Two, three, and four. All right. The overall energy for you is the devil upside down, which is that's the way that you want it, and the page of swords upside down. So let's talk about those. And I did not have any cards upside down in this deck, so that is interesting that that happened. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the opposite of the devil, so the overall energy for you is the opposite is, is these releasing of limiting beliefs and exploring your dark thoughts. And because of that, then now we have this page of swords, which is upside, upside down, uh, coupled with him. It's about self-expression and all talk and no action and haste. So be careful with that shadow side. Um, but I feel like it's because you're exploring the devil energy and it's reversed energy and so you're exploring those limiting beliefs you're exploring the dark dark side so sometimes you're not going to want to take action because of that because you're trying to figure out what you really need in life so it seems to me like the mercury uh, the mercury retrograde in libra was bringing that out for you so if you felt really quiet lately or you felt like you've been on edge or you felt like you weren't in the best energy that's probably why the present situation that you're in right now is this King of Wands, where you're learning how to be more vulnerable. You're learning how to take your mask off and not have to wear a mask in public and be this other thing that you're really not. You may have felt kind of impulsive or overbearing or maybe even uh, have impossible expectations. Be careful with that energy as we're in the Aries energy with Mars, with the full moon. That could be... That could be um, that can be problematic for sure. The king is great at looking at the big picture. He's a leader and he's, oh, he overcomes his challenges. So the shadow side is the impulsivity and the overbearing nature that could come out because of the full moon. We're not talking about that just yet, but I, I'm, I'm guided to tell you that. Um, the king, he is a king that's good with communication and he is very self-aware of what he wants and needs. Um, and he does express himself very freely. So that's good energy to be in. The action that you need to take or the event that is occurring is this 
three of swords, which is there's some heartache. So looks like Libra brought up some things for you that made you feel really uncomfortable. And it may have broken your heart a little bit, maybe gave you some emotional pain. Maybe you were hurt. Maybe there's some negative self-talk that came up and uh, it was all about just like releasing pain and it was hard for you to be optimistic and hard for you to even forgive yourself or forgive others at this moment. And, or if that hasn't happened yet, then there may be some things coming up for you to get rid of that pain inside of your heart. It's time for you to get rid of whatever's been happening. The thing that needs to be weighed up is this hermit mode. So God put you in this hermit mode, which we talked about before, this more um, secluded kind of uh, disconnected mode. So you can really take a look at these things so you can balance it out, balance out your impulsivity, balance out your overbearing nature. Um, you are a fire sign, so you're going to feel the fire sign energy pretty, pretty big because you're you're fiery. So also there's a lot of um, weighing up of your soul searching experiences, your introspection, your inner guidance. Um, just don't isolate yourself or become lonely or withdrawn because of it, because that could be an energy that happens because of that. Or maybe you felt that way during the Libra um, Mercury retrograde. But like I said, as we get closer to November, it should lighten up for you. This is just to give you an idea of maybe what you were going through and what your lessons were and how you can move forward. The overall uh, outcome for the whole Mercury retrograde for you was about, um, it's the Hierophant, which, or Hierophant, however you want to say it, but it's about your spiritual wind wisdom, looking at your religious beliefs or looking at your belief systems, looking at the ways that you conform or you don't conform, and uh, the things that you've always done them the way they have because that's tradition. So it's actually trying to balance and free you up from the challenging status quo things or this challenging personal beliefs that you've been holding on to, the challenging negative self-talk, those things. So like I said, if you felt quiet because you were in a stronger energy, then that's, that's why. You were in an energy that was supposed to quiet you down so you can hear what's going on in your heart and hear what's going on instead of... Uh, so this this Mercury retrograde I'm feeling for you wasn't very projective for you. Like you weren't projecting and slamming things and getting real fiery. It was like, okay, I'm just gonna go within and deal with my deal with what I need to. And so that's actually a really good thing. Let's take a look at this full moon energy for you, so we can see what's going on in this air um, in this fire sign for you. Okay, so the next card that we're going to talk about is the Emperor, and the reason why is because there's a full moon in Aries on the twentieth. We just got out of a new moon in Libra, and then we had the 1010 portal, portal, which was super crazy. And now we're moving into the energy of Aries moon. The emperor, he is about control, security, order, and ambition. When it comes to your home, the things that you might be noticing is, are things running smoothly? Are things in order? And do you have the right boundaries and protection? So this is an interesting thing. You can use black salt to go around your house and that will protect your house for from negative energy. Um, that is just a spiritual thing that you can do if you want to. And it's about setting boundaries within your home, outside your home. Maybe you have people who come and they just come without being announced. Uh, I, I don't like that actually. <laughs> it's not one of my things. If you're coming to my house, you got to text me and let me know that you're coming. You can't just like stop by. <laughs> I'm not into that. But um, in a relationship, you might have a new partner. You might be focusing on a new partner. Uh, it might be about planning for the future or loyalty and love. Like, is your partner loyal or are they cheater? You know, do they cheat on your money? Do they cheat on your love? Do they cheat? What kind of person are you with? In career and money, it could be about um, like how your finances are organized, how you bl balance your expenditures, the things that you might feel are unfair or do you have fairness at work? And then are you being stifled in your creativity when it comes to work? Like, are you able to express yourself? The more negative aspect of the emperor is, the emperor is very power hungry. He's very excessive with his demands. He has a lot of negative traits associated with the traditional masculinity such as being domineering, controlling, and even cruel at times. 
And another aspect of the Emperor is greed. The Emperor is really good at setting boundaries, but when we're in a negative energy of the Emperor, we might have problems with drawing the line with people, or maybe we use excessive force. Um, and persuasion to get what, you know, somebody's using that either for you or you're using it to other people to get exactly what you want. So it's a, it could be very manipulative as well. The other issue with the emperor card and this energy is that people might have problems with authority figures. So gosh, I hope not, but there could be some problems with like, we might be seeing things surfacing where people are not um, respecting the law or respecting like the cops, if the cop pulls them over, you might see a lot of those types of things coming up. Um, but this is, the emperor can be a very, very domineering person, very um, egotistical and narcissistic. Now, if you look at the card of the emperor, like we're looking at the card of the justice, he's wearing a red cloak, which is about armor, having your armor on. So the emperor is not as vulnerable. He's not a vulnerable person. Um, he doesn't like to show his vulnerabilities, but he is very good at taking action. That's why it's the card of Aries, because he um, Aries takes action. Aries is the ram. So Mars is the ruler of this planet, and that's why. The red cloak also represents um, taking action and being in the material world. So this one, this person doesn't like to stay too much in the 5D. They like to stay in the 3D and muscle and grit their way through life. The crown that sits on the emperor's head is about the higher self and shows how the emperor is very autonomous and self-directed. All right, Sagittarius, let's do this four card spread for this one as well. All right, so we're gonna look at the situation, the um, past issue, your hopes and fears, and then your outcome when it comes to this full moon. What's gonna be illuminated for you, all right? All right, so the overall energy for that is some sort of reunion within the divine feminine. So divine within yourself. So when we're looking at the, so it's a reunion of self, and that's what you were exploring during the Libra Mercury retrograde was the shadow side of yourself. The Empress energy, she is looking at her feminine side. She's looking at her, what makes her considered to be beautiful. Um, what, what does it mean to be natured or nurtured? What does it mean for you to have abundance? Also, um, what creativity things may have been blocked or are being blocked? Are you dependent on things and others? So those are like, where's your independence and where's your inner self-worth? It's like coming back to that. So this is the, this can be a reunion of people but it also can be a reunion of the mind, body, and spirit. So I'm feeling more like it is creating this wholeness with inside of you and this um, self-esteem, okay? And we all have feminine parts of us. So when we're looking at the feminine part of ourselves, some of us have more than others, but um, when you're looking at the feminine part of yourself and it doesn't matter if you're masculine or feminine, we all have feminine stuff. Um, now, it doesn't matter if you're boy or girl, that's what I meant to say. We all have feminine aspects to ourselves. How you are feeling in this situation is you're wanting to move forward in a really fast direction. You want the events to speed up. You want sudden, unexpected truths. You want, um, you're feeling more determined with this full moon energy in Aries. And, and Mars is the ruler of Aries, so you feel very driven. You have a strong sense of self and that's what Libra was working on with you and that's what the full moon is going to illuminate for you is a strong sense of self. And like I said, this could be sudden, sudden unexpected truths as well. You're wanting that. You're wanting the truth to come out. The past issue that you've had is struggling with moving forward, struggling with procrastination, struggling with um, not wanting to change. Uh, not being able to make quick decisions, panic, 
waiting, slowing down, not having the movement that you want. That's the past issue that you're moving out of and moving into a more sudden, unexpected quit. This is one of the fastest nights you can get. I mean, he's just charging through with his, with his sword. That's the energy you want, especially if you've been slowed down a lot. You want it to move up a lot faster and be boom, boom, boom. Your hopes and fears have to do with your long-term vision. So it's looking at the decisions that you've been making, um, planning a lot. You want to plan, but you do, you have this fear of changing. Uh, you maybe wanted to play it safe and maybe you, you had bad planning on purpose, but your hopes is that you can make better decisions. You're, you're in the energy of making um, unexpected, sudden decisions and just moving forward and in a very fiery way. So that's going to make you feel more at home. That's really good. We're moving away from that energy and moving into the outcome, which is your Ace of Cups. You're going to feel really good. So this is good. This is awesome. This is a cup of love. It's a gift of love. It's um, a gift of a uh, stable relationship, emotional fulfillment, positive emotions, lots of creativity. And um, this full moon is going to do wonders for you, especially if you felt stuck in life. You're going to feel like um, you're going to be start to flourish and start to like really have action in your life again. And it's just going to make you feel really, really good. So this is great energy for you. All right, if you like this reading or entertain in some way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Mid-October reading is on the screen right here. Also your playlist. So you guys have a great day. I can't wait to see you again for the next reading. Bye.